The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world of investment choice that goes beyond borders. Open up a world of investment opportunity with NetWealth, where you can access local and international securities, as well as bonds and foreign currency options for wholesale clients. Offer your clients flexibility, transparency, and efficiency with managed accounts, managed funds, and access to non-custodial assets. A world of investment awaits you. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter diamond and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Canva, and I am so excited, we're finally getting to talk about Canva. I've been waiting a long time. I first saw her speak at an Australian blogging conference called Pro Blogger way back in 2016, would you believe? Then lucky enough to witness her speak at Social Media Marketing World in the US in 2020, just before the pandemic hit. I hope it wasn't because of us. She's a <laughs> Canva verified expert and was one of Canva's first 300 users who tested this tool in its infancy 10 years ago. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Donna Moritz, woo! Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Peter. I'm very excited. <laughs> I was very excited to talk to you about our early days in conferences. Right. Such good times in Australia. And it's so I've had to train myself to start going back to events. It's it's almost like a default yes. no for a little while yeah. there where it's like, oh, well, I don't know. Now it's like, Peter, just say yes. You've got to go get out into the, the big bad world again. <laughs> yeah, it's good fun. It's always good to learn new things and I think the people we meet are the most important thing out of all of it. Yeah, and the diversity of that. Yes. Right, getting out of our little world. All right, so keen to pick your brain about all things Canva and you are the perfect person to do that with. But let's just ease us in a little and get to know you through your use of technology. Yes. What's your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? <laughs> yes, I uh, I think I make friends based on how often they use emojis. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I use a lot of emojis. Um and I'm not surprised to say that my fa- my most used emoji is the laughing emoji, but it's right. closely followed by the shocked face emoji and the eye roll emoji, which are usually laughing at myself. So. Right. Yeah. The duh. And, and a fair oh. dose of like love, hearts, raise hands, fist bumps. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I'm much the same. In fact, uh, I've got a, a good friend of mine that calls, you know, emojis a love language in that it just talks a different yes. way to each other. It's very emotive. Yes. Now, we all live with our smartphones almost permanently attached to us, some of us around our wrists. If you had to wipe everything off your smartphone and just keep three apps, what are the three you'd keep? Oh, it's a tough one because I I struggle with working in social media and, and marketing and I often just remove all notifications off my phone. <laughs> right. And so I think the three that I would keep, obviously Canva, although I do most of my work on desktop. Um mm-hmm. Instagram and probably Spotify okay. <laughs> so I can have music. But like the things like phone, text, email, and messenger are kind of a given. But I, I just I really yeah. don't like notifications on my phone and I find that I just get so distracted. So yeah, it'd probably be more like lifestyle fun kind of apps. It's funny, isn't it, with and particularly with social media, because you'll have feel like you've done something great and it's a great post or something interesting you're announcing. And for yes. the first few moments of the reaction, that's exciting, the notifications. And then after that, it's like, oh, for goodness yes. sake, just be quiet. Like, I, yes. I don't need this phone to vibrate constantly. This is ridiculous. I know. If so, only I could get my kids to switch off their notifications. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's dive into Canvas, shall we? So, sure. 
Now, the listener out there probably falls into two broad camps, and I sort of want to acknowledge this so that they don't feel like they're uh, on their own. There's going to be some of you listening that are, are Canva users, and you've been playing with the tool for a while. Very few, I think, in our game would necessarily be pro users or somebody really, you know, that dives deeply into it. But then there'll be a whole lot of others who are saying, Peter, I have no earthly clue what Canva is. So (laughs) just for them, let's take a step up and get a sense of where Canva sits in the sort of tech space for, you know, small business or sort of that sort of area, what other solutions would people be considering or using that might give them a sense of where Canva fits? Sure. So Canva, I think Canva's almost almost become an entity in itself now, you Mm. know, like Xerox and and some of the other things we talk about, like a, you know, like a brand. But um, they launched 10 years ago literally I think my anniversary was literally 10 years uh, in July yep. uh, to be um, a more accessible software for people to design, to mm. bring design to everybody um, or, to, as I say, to democratise design. So I think, you know, it definitely has um, become huge. Like there's 135 million active users. I think they did their 15 billionth design um, in March. And uh, and just for a fun fact, it's become the second most valuable brand in Australia after Combank um, wow. with more than Woolies, Telstra and Bunnings. The specifics of that I don't want to get into because this, this is a financial podcast. So yeah. <laughs> it, that's probably one way of looking at it. There's different yeah. parameters, but, yeah, it's pretty yeah. big. I mean, that's how big they have become. So I... You know, as far as why they were developed, which will put into perspective what you can compare it against. Like yeah. when Melanie Perkins was tutoring um, design students at, at a university in Western Australia many, many years ago, she just struggled to get them to pick up um, the Adobe systems, which are, you know, the, the gold standard as far as um designers and doing yeah. high-end design but learning those systems is very tricky um, for the average person that just needs to create some content it was you know she was finding that very difficult to teach people you have to remember where all the, everything was it wasn't intuitive so that's how Canva came about uh, so now it is really um, you know it's a full visual communication suite it's more than just creating you know social media templates and I think uh, you asked like what it would compare against for people mm. to consider where it sits. Well, you've got like the Adobe systems and, um, you know, Photoshop like all the Adobe all creative, all the creative suite creative, and, yep. and those sorts of tools, yep. which are more full vector graphics and, um, you know, full designer <laughs> tools. Um, full disclosure, I don't know how to use them very well. I can do a little no. bit on there. <laughs> They're really um, intimidating. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to know how to use them more, but every time I try, like it's it's a lot of learning. Um, yeah. And what uh, Canva does is bring design to everyone so that mm. um, it's bringing in a lot of different tools in one place, making it very intuitive and easy to use. Um, and basically they're democratising design or like I I tend to think of it as not as so much that you're going in as a designer, but you're going in there to create amazing visual content quickly and easily without having to be a designer. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, I am a designer for Canva. Um, I was very fortunate to be put into a program where we create templates for Canva. Uh, so my 10 years of teaching non-designers how to edit templates in Canva kind of came into good use because I can design <laughs> with them in mind. Yeah. Um, and, and so I do sort of sit from both perspectives of how this tool is useful. And I just know that it's so powerful for small businesses and consultants and your audience here today can use it in so many really cool ways. So they don't need to be designers and learn Adobe. Yeah. Um, but on this, by the same token, if they are designers or they work in a team with designers, there are some really, really cool things that they can do as a team to work together with a, a group of, you know, mainly non-designers to be able to create branded content and share their, um, you know, share educationally or share their message or share their their company. Uh, so there's a few different ways that it, it's very, very powerful. 
And what I like, for me, what I like about it is, um, yeah, design was always this mystical art, right? So, so you'd, <laughs> you'd make a request to a designer and there was this mystical thing that occurred and it came back and they'd provide you with files you had no earthly clue. Well, like you didn't have the program to upload the files, but it was part of the package. You know, you got the files in this funny, I guess it was Adobe format, whatever the format was. Yes. Um, but once you got something designed, you know, any changes that needed to be made, even as small as a tiny tweak, then needed to go back to them. Because yes. it was really that siloed, right? It was that sort of, that was their world, yeah. their tech, like you point out. Like it just meant that it was, and for them, I, and I've got some friends who are in that world, all those little tweaks were a pain in the neck. Oh, like, so this is not what they want to do. Email. Right? It's For horrific. the client and the designer. It is. It's the, boring. Oh, I don't want to change the link to the whatever. Like this is just, you know. So I, yeah. I'm guessing that Canva has sort of empowered them to be the sort of true creatives. Yes. And then for the, you know, ground level work where we've got, you know, that annual document yeah. you produce that you just change a few things. Well, we can do that. We can do that in Canva. Yeah. You know? And look, I train teams to work with the in-house designer mm. to create templates so that the whole team can use it as a Canva yeah. verified expert. That's sort of part of my role. But also I just, you know, there's so much power in designers actually learning Canva as well as using their tools that they use. And there's other yeah. tools like you know, a pick monkey and easel and a few really good design tools. Mm -hmm. But I think if they can, um, if they can use a tool like Canva and be able to create templates and be able to help their clients, then, um, you know, if they've done all the branded, all the logos and all of that, and then come in and give that to the client, often as small business owners, if you're not a designer, it's very easy to use those kind of in that haphazard way and not use the branding elements as they were designed to use. So a designer can actually come in, offer an extra service in Canva to set that all up for the small business owner, you know, the set up the brand, set up all the colours and the fonts and the logos and the images and um, even some templates and then help them to be able to use it really easily. So yeah. there's a lot of power in these types of tools um, and designers don't need to be scared of them. They can embrace them and, and have a whole extra added on service. Definitely, because there is an element where I think most small business owners have managed to Frankenstein their brand because <laughs> they got I've the done original it design, in the right? Yes. Yeah. And then you've played with it and oh, and I just added this and I slightly changed that, and the original designer would yeah. just be horrified. And the designers, yeah. <laughs> like, not what happy. have you done? This is terrible. You know, so I think by having that guidance of there, and there is an art in it, there absolutely is yes. an art. So having that, you know, where they can then set it up for you, and the, but then having something you can use every day, I think is really powerful. Yeah. And if it means we can do more storytelling, you know, yes. visual storytelling, that to me is the magic. Um, yeah, you know, because, I mean, feel. if you're doing, you know, a presentation to pitch your services or you just want to be able to, you know, maybe do a question of the month on your Instagram or whatever, having that template and being able to go in and just, you know, drag and drop a photo um, and that's one of the things that Canva does really well. It makes it really easy just to drag and drop elements in. You know, there's a huge photo library, video library elements. Um, if you can sort of have that content ready to go, it makes it much easier for you. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. A plus. Absolutely. So then, look, there's the – I mean, when I think about my introduction to Canva, it came from me being sort of almost like operating like a solopreneur. I wasn't. I had a business, but I was sort of, you know, yes. I was the – practice owner or business leader, that would be one. But I'd imagine there'd be all sorts of team members in a small business team that could take advantage of Canva. Yes. How have you seen that work? You know, where who do you think that works well for? Or, and have you ever seen it go wrong? Like when doesn't it work? I think the key with Canva, um, whether you're a solo business user or a team, is to set things up well to start with. And maybe you can right. get someone in to help you do that, whether it's a designer or a consultant, someone like me that yeah. – can come in and help you get things set up. But there's a few key things you can do in Canva to start with so you don't go down a rabbit hole of a big mess. Um, have your brand kit set up. Like if you've got logos and colours and fonts, you can set those up in there. And I yep. do recommend um, and just a side thing that they have a pro account. It's not a huge expense. It's like $120 a year. Um, and then you get access to all the templates, the entire library of assets. You can do things like set up more than one brand kit. So say you can um, maybe you've got a sub um, you know, let's say for your company, you know, the, the podcast yep. might be a separate exactly. brand kit. Um, exactly. You can do all those things. You can set up folders more efficiently and subfolders and organize your content um, more efficiently. So that that in itself, whether you're a small business owner or a solopreneur or a, a team, like a, you know, a financial team or 
a bigger company, it's really powerful. And then I think there's so many ways that you can use the content. Obviously, there's like you can use the templates in Canva um, and switch them out to your brand or your message and, and do things like social media and marketing. But there's a lot of other tools in Canva that are very, very um, powerful for collaboration. So you can do um, – like digital first documents, they're called docs, which is a bit like um, your Google Docs, but yep. more designed to be used digitally. And if yep. you're in um, a team, there's a Teams account you can get as well, but you can even just share comments back and forth with clients or also other team members. You can get yep. them to give feedback. So it kind of eliminates the whole email <laughs> scenario <laughs> yep. for a lot of it. Um, yep. You know, I've worked with, um, mentoring other creators that create um, templates in Canva or, of, of um, you know, even just with clients. Yeah. Um, there was a team we trained um, in uh, the retirement, this, uh, sort of retirement um, aged care facilities, facilities in yeah. Perth and we, they weren't using Teams to the functionality and so he was emailing me back and forth and the, the designer and I said, hey, let's do this in Canva. And so we were actually commenting on a document together in Canva. So there's that potential. You can also take that content if you're doing a document together or maybe it's a proposal or, you know, it might be um, a document that you create that you might run through with a client when you're talking to them about whether they need to set up a self-managed super fund or something like that, right? Yeah. And then you can actually use some of the artificial intelligence in Canva and you can convert that to a presentation just with one click and choosing a style right. that's pre-built into Canva. So there's a lot of things you can do collaboratively with team yeah. members or with clients. Um, they also have a very cool um, – so this is part of the visual suite that they brought in. So you've got social um, yep. and then you've got uh, – on top of that we've got uh, a whole bunch of other types of documents. So you've got Canva for print – You've got uh, Canva for, so you've got presentations, whiteboards, docs, Canva for print. Um, th- there's a whole bunch of different things in the Visual Suite Landing video yeah. that yeah. comes together to allow you to sort of create visual content effectively. So that's that's really powerful. And the whiteboards themselves are a really good um, collaborative document. So you can have a team of people or you can be remote. Um, and I know we were talking earlier that um, financial planners or the financial service industry, you do a lot of, um, you know, you, obviously it's it's an industry that, you know, in my own experience, you, you would always usually sit with the person and, and right. bring out the whiteboard. You in know, the meeting and room and get out the whiteboard. Where, yep. Yeah, work through where you're at, what, what, what we can do, some options. Um, the world's changed a little bit and we can do a lot virtually. I, I gather a lot of your listeners might work virtually with clients now. Yep, yep, yeah, absolutely. So the whiteboards are really powerful. So sometimes even when I'm talking to other people through the Canva, the Canva team or my clients, you can jump on a whiteboard and it's virtually like, you know, you can move sticky labels around. There's all these different templates that you can use to plan or do different um, projects Um as as a team so you're literally that's exciting in, yeah so you're in the document together um at the same time working on um whatever it is you want to work on so it might yeah. be like a roadmap or a um i'm just looking at some here you've got roadmaps flow charts you know mood boards if you're trying to work out your brand changes with the designer it might be you know, uh, a plan for a financial, you know, you can set, you can take a yep. lot of these templates and change them around. You can have things like um, people can put emojis or stickers or thumbs up on different things to vote. They nice. can put whiteboard comments. So I think this is one of the coolest things for teams to be able to work collaboratively, collaboratively on documents Um and I think it is probably, you know, one of the one of the little ninja tricks I think would be great for or ninja features I think would be great for your audience to check out if they're Definitely, working Definitely, I remotely. think um, lots of advisors will have a, like a boxes and arrows diagram for something. Like it's because yes. some of the concepts we're sharing yeah. can be a little complicated. So you draw like you, like a, like a flow chart almost and you end up drawing and, you know, and arrows and that sort of thing. I love the idea of having templates for a few different strategies set up ready with maybe the elements yes. sitting off to the side ready and you're yeah. dragging them over 
you're still sort of drawing in the sense that you're pulling it together, but it doesn't require the quality of your drawing skill quite as much because yeah. you've got those elements already ready to drag in. And so it sort of ele- it's still personal. It still feels like you're creating it live, but it also has got a bit, it's juiced up a bit. You know, it's got a bit yeah. of style to it. Um, oh, and and can also stunning. be safe if for them, just- right? Yeah, so if anyone's listening now, just Google Canva whiteboards and you'll see all the templates come up and you'll be able to check them out. But, I mean, it's it's um, it's um cool that it's real time too. You can do things like set, mm. set timers so that you can, you know, say, right, five minutes, we're just going to write our ideas or comments on these three proposal proposed um, strategies that we might take and everyone can just jump in. Or it might be that, you know, you um, – get your client to add um, some things on different sections there and you can be in there at the same time. You see the little heads moving around on the, <laughs> on the, on the whiteboard. So it's very, very cool tech. And yeah. that's interesting too because um, there are other tools that will let you do it. Like there's Miro and, and other tools that will let you do some of these things. But often yes. – yeah. That we don't use them often. Like it's one of those things that we think, oh, yes. that's really good for that one perf- thing I need, but I don't use it enough to warrant getting the app. Whereas yeah. if Canva give us a version within something we use anyway, you know, that just just makes it more like we're using more of the tool, more of the features. Um, and it's not another tool that we've got to then train oh, the team on. Look, honestly, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Like, I mean, my background is teaching non-designers how to edit, you know, social media marketing templates. I create templates for Canva. But one of the things that I've been banging on about for the last six months is the fact that um, – Canva's been using artificial intelligence as part of their software for a, a while now. Right. Um, so it's baked into what they do. And there was a comment recently that um, Cliff, the co-founder, uh, said, he said, people don't open their commu- computer at the start of the day or wake up in the morning thinking, I want to use AI or some other <laughs> tool, you know. Right. They wake up in the morning thinking, I have these certain jobs to be done and we see it as our job as a company to help them achieve those jobs to be done. Yeah. And that's what I love about Canva is that, they try to make everything intuitive. So there are things built into these tools. Like if you're doing a document and you're like, oh, I just can't, I can't think of the wording that I want to write about, you know, this type of financial proposal. Right? Yep. So you have to write something. You're not a writer. You're more of a numbers person. Mm-hmm. You can actually in docs or in a, write through Canva in different documents, you can use what's called Magic Write, which is a version of you've probably heard of Chat GPT. Yep. If, not been asleep for the last six months. <laughs> um, so artificial intelligence tools, we're all often having to go out and use chat GPT somewhere else. Yeah. Whereas Canva has a version, it's pulling in a version of the same, you know, s- software mm-hmm. into Canva and it's built into where you need to be doing the writing. You don't have to go out and use chat GPT and then copy it back in. You can right. just do a write slash, use their special magic um, write integration and boom, you're off. You can start um start using that that software within Canva. Um, so Which is just incredible, of, right? Like it's- yeah, and I think that's the – this is like the, the hidden world of Canva that people don't realise is that there's – like you said, you don't want to be opening up multiple documents and if you do the odd whiteboard but you can do it in Canva and then you can – you know, have a document there that you can, you know, pull into the whiteboard and then you can say, okay, well, let's turn this into a presentation. We've got it now, guys. This is what we need to say. Bam, you've got a presentation that you can take to the senior partners. These are the tools that make it much easier, you know, and even if you're just a one-person show working with clients, to be able to jump on a whiteboard when they're in Perth and you're in Sydney is super powerful. Yeah, it really is. And I think, I mean, it's it's interesting the way you were describing AI there, and I I like the mental shift. I think it's like you say. I mean, if you've been mm. on LinkedIn and haven't noticed AI, what the hell are you reading? Because like it's yeah. every second post, every second post is somebody offering to help you with AI. Yeah. Um, but I think the shift to thinking of it more like electricity, like this yeah. is just something that facilitates the other thing we're doing. It's not yes. the purpose in and of itself, and I think it's an important shift. Um, yeah. Because it's just about making things that we do otherwise easier quicker, more exciting, more fun. I mean, I find, you know, like I love words, I love writing, but I'm, I really struggle with things like headlines, like, yes, you know, narrowing it down. My headlines need to be like 56 words long, like, I, <laughs> but I've got yeah, so much to say, look, you know. 
I'm so, a copywriter too. Like I love that stuff. And yeah. I was like, oh, you know, I don't love AI. It's all, yeah. you know, it's pulling all my blog content and whatever. But yeah. I do love it because if used well, it's so powerful. Like when I'm doing Canva templates, I, you know, it might be five tips for how to become a runner. I would have had to go to multiple blog posts to get that. Yeah. But I've done, you know, you could go in today in um, Canva. It's called Magic Write. Um, and uh, there's a little button down the bottom to open that up or you can use right slash where you're typing um, and it will bring up the the uh, the tool. Mm. And you can say, okay, give me 10 ideas for social media posts that are funny for the financial industry <laughs> client, right. for my clients. So you might be wanting to just like, you know, just bring a little bit of lightness to your social yep. media posts in amongst some of the advice and the tips you're giving. Magic Right will give you a whole bunch of different um, – ideas for posts that you can do and, and some of them might be amazing and some of them might be like oh, I'll leave that but you can then tweak them and sometimes it's just that idea generation yeah. um, and I know it sounds crazy we're talking about Canva which is a visual first design tool but it is a visual communication suite and like um, Cliff said you know the design ecosystem itself was also fragmented you know you've got stock photos over here you've got writing tools over here you've yes. got um, you know AI Printing, they've brought all of it together. Yeah. So it's in one place. Um, yes. Which yes. could be a disaster, but they've done it so well that it's intuitively quite um, easy to learn. Like, look, I, and it's that's a really important point, I think, because um, design is to advisors what advice is probably to designers, right? So <laughs> it's yes. this strange. Well, that seems really complicated, and don't you need forty-seven things? Yeah. And you'd look at the tools we use and go, "Oh my goodness, I couldn't possibly use." Like it's a very similar, yes. but quite well, quite separate on that spectrum. And when I think of the complexity of all the elements that Canva is pulling together, such that me, I mean, I am as numbers brained as they come. And so somebody like me that would never have been able to ever be in design, like I'm just one of those humans. It's just not innate yes. to me. I struggle to put decent, you know, clothing sets together, you know, and I look at my girlfriends <laughs> that can do the full, you know, glorious stuff and I'm, I'm envious, but I just will never be able to do it. But to empower somebody to You've do that the easily. you down though. <laughs> that's the thing. Exactly. Got the dollars covered. Not yes. so much of the rest, um, <laughs> but I think they very cleverly have done that. And it's something I don't think we've done as well in finance is that tool that's innate, that sort of brought yeah. together the complexity and just made it feel like, wow, I feel empowered to at least put my toe in the water, you know, to really sort of get a bit done and yeah. and feel like I can understand more and, and, you know, engage, particularly in a world where if you can't do visual storytelling, you're going to struggle to market at all. Yeah, definitely. And right. I think, um, well, there's an opportunity for someone in the financial industry, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. But I, I think, um, you know, and I worried too because I was used to Canva being a social media marketing, you know, content, visual content tool and I knew what I loved about it. And when all this visual suite came in, I'm like, wow, that's a lot that's being added in. But it was the thing that kept striking me is that I can go in and do a whiteboard when I'm in Canva. I'm, I'm on a call with someone, hey, let's jump in and do that. And then it's all there for me to pull the information out and create a social media post or create a presentation. And I did think, wow, this is going to be interesting, but mm. it's all seamless. And the other thing that we haven't even touched on is video. And obviously you said visual communication is so important. Yes. The video tool, I mean, I've been a brand ambassador for other video tools in the past, like wave.video, um, you know, I've worked with companies like Animoto, um, yep. you know, really good video content creation tools. And I have to say that Canva's just nailing it as far as video. They've I do some longer form video and I have to use tools like ScreenFlow, but I'm finding that I'm doing more and more in Canva and I create social video templates in Canva for people to use um, in their library. So I get both sides of it, but there's just so many cool things you can do with Canva videos. So it means you can basically just drag and drop in your content. There's a really easy timeline to edit. You can add music or use their music library. Um, the animations you can do on video are super cool. Like I just love playing with Canva video now. It's <laughs> it's um so if someone, you know, wanted to do an explainer video for their business or a, a social media reel for Instagram, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're, they're working on it all the time, so it's getting better and better, and I'm finding that I don't have to go outside of Canva as much. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> right, well, yeah, right, as you should be. Um, yeah. I found it interesting when I realised, because, you know, 
lots of us live in YouTube, even if we don't realize that's where we're living. A lot of what we're seeing is coming through yeah. from YouTube. And I'd look at some of the the people that are producing a lot in there um, and they've got all those, like the videos clearly well produced, you know, and I'd look With at- the animations. And- all of that, right? And and the, yeah. the yeah, all of that looked fantastic. And I was looking at it thinking, look, I'm just not going to be able to compete with that until I saw the templates in camera. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you I can had someone pit- say I did a little um I have a Facebook group for my community just mainly about Canva and I did just a welcome video. I updated it and one of the girls said, How did you do all those animations? I said, I, I did them in Canva. Like before it would have been such a rigmarole to do them right. in another software and Get the, and sometimes you had to buy animations before right. a while ago. They weren't all integrated. And I, and I said, most of it's in Canva. I, there's a little bit of green screen stuff I had to do out of Canva, but even with Canva now you can remove the background of videos. So can you can you put your that? video talking, remove the background, and then overlay it over any a gradient background or a beach or whatever you want. Whatever. Um, you can do a lot more in Canva. that We used to have to send, you know, videos and images off to a, designer or Fiverr or someone to remove the background. It was a huge process. Yeah. Now it's just one click in Canva. So, um, again, what's, that's one of the pro features that, that is well worth buying. Definitely, um, definitely. And yeah, I, if you get I know a photo I haven't shoot used done, enough. Yeah, go and get a photo shoot done, get all your backgrounds removed so you can then overlay them on some images if you're posting on social media or, um, you know, do a new LinkedIn photo or header or whatever you want to use it for. But it's just – it's super – powerful i mean the video the video tool itself is worth the price of entry alone i think um, yeah and it's been yeah. like it's it's a it's a bit of a bugbear for me because i'm i like i relax doing video i'm quite happy anytime anybody wants a video testimony i'm like no problem yeah. i'm i'm happy to chat but it's the po- the minute i've finished and you've hit you know stop what to do with it after that, it's like all the yeah. stuff you used to have to do. Whereas, I, I've just realised in us talking, then you know I'm not taking advantage of that using Canva because I think the trick, and I do it with the podcast now as well. The trick is if you can do whatever you've got to record, like that bit, in yes. uh, in one hit. Try and do it yep. such that what, however you've designed it, it can be relaxed enough that if you fumble a bit, it doesn't matter. If you know you can just go with the flow, and then all you've got to do is the prettying. And you don't need to faff around too much, and you've got a tool like Canva which can just give it, you know, that lift. Then we can actually be producing far more content. Yes, you know? and actually, um, there's you touched on something really important. The in the built-in recording features in Canva are just getting better and better too. So you can record voiceovers, you can do some video, and then record a voiceover, or you can just record, present, and record. You can do grab a template for a presentation, record that presentation while talking and then it's all recorded into camera and you can save it and share it. Um, you can also, you know, have just record a screen without yourself or you can add yourself in the corner um, and a little little circle video. So yeah. there's so much you can do. Like it's just blowing my mind. I, you know, the other day they added some new animations that were just like these little subtle animations that you could do. And I'm like, oh, I put them straight into templates I was creating for camera because they just made – this was just an effect that – um, just simple, but it makes you look like you're a pro video creator. <laughs> right, um, right. Yeah. Because so. we don't need <clears> – <throat> particularly financial services, like yes. some of the some of the um, virtual events now happening from the big – we're talking big fund managers and things like that. Like they yeah. really go to town. These are like, you know, polit- political launch quality, you know, that really insane mm. virtual thing. The yes. funny thing is we're all actually conditioned to – to enjoy video that's more relaxed, we're actually at the yes. point now where I think our brains actually filter that as 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 advertising. When it's too polished, yeah, we're like, definitely. wait a minute, is this advertorial? What's going on here? So actually, we're in this sweet spot where doing it yourself and it being more personable and relaxed, but with some great catch your eye sort of attention grabbing stuff from Canva is probably the best place to be. Yeah, you know, I you love watching a video where someone's budget. just straight face to camera and then they just add like a funny little animation or a gif in the corner. Right. Like I think you can do a lot of that in Instagram, but I, I listened to your interview with James about TikTok and yeah. um, how he was using TikTok to basically, I think 
from he was just basically answering questions about fi- finances yes um, and he's doing really well um you don't have to add animations but you can do things like add captions and i mean captions is fairly new in canva there's there's a whole bunch of things you can just add in you know and you've got the integration with giphy so if you want to add a funny gif in the corner like just to make it a little bit humorous or whatever like those sorts of things make it more accessible for people because nobody you know finances can be uh, a world of emotions to talk about. It is a world, so absolutely. The more, yeah, absolutely. the more interesting, fun, and just um, real you can make it. Like you're not speaking to people from on high, like, you know, yes. with your advice and sometimes we just don't understand what we don't know. So I think it's 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 important. Financial lit- literacy has never been more important for people. I, and I mean, I'm speaking about someone just, you know, doing marketing for their services. There's obviously a whole different bunch of things that you could use video for, but that's just one example. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned something there. Before we dive into one other question I have here, you just mentioned yep. something in passing, and I'm putting you on the spot here, so I apologize in <laughs> advance. Uh, getting photo shoot, getting some photos done so that then, like you say, you can get take the background yep. out and put it on different things in Canva. The thing I've struggled with is a lot of photographers are used to headshot photo yes. shoots that are corporate-y. Yep. Is, do you know of a list or anything that can be like almost a whole lot of stances or styles of photos to get done that are just more usable for social media now? Because you sort of want oh, different expressions and different, you know, <laughs> like what are, what are the list of things you could do so that you've got everything you might need to then well, use for a year's worth that, of content? Um, probably is like, what do I do with my hands? You know, like, I don't right, correct, me too. Like, yeah. but I think, I think the thing is like if you're going to do a photo shoot, because I'm probably going to do another one soon, um, Finding a photographer that is used to brand photo shoots like right. and maybe a little bit different from your, just your headshots, like talk to them, get some examples and find, you know, if you can see them show some examples of brand shoots they've done where the person is outside or in a coffee shop or in different places with different props, I think if you can um, come with some different outfits have a photographer that knows the location or the area so they can suggest some different, like I did a shoot in, San Diego once and the guy knew where to go like he knew right. some different places we could go he had some suggestions of how to pose but also you can come with um you can come with some props and maybe yep. a couple of jackets and clothing changes a few bright pops of color if that's you um yep. the other thing i suggest is maybe doing some shots that are holding up devices if that's sort of it might might not be that you're a social media person, but you could even just hold up an iPad. So then you can overlay some text on them or, yes, you know, it might be or, that there's some blank space in the photos so you can do that yep. or maybe even some pointing photos. I know that sounds silly, but, you know, or looking in a certain direction and then looking in the other direction yep. can be really powerful if you're trying to do, you know, a LinkedIn banner or something and you want to put yourself on the left or the right. Yes. So a good photographer will probably know all that stuff. Um, yeah, okay. You know, for me, I'm a copywriter and a designer and a trainer, so I might turn up with a typewriter and some devices and maybe some social media things and anything to do with coffee. <laughs> so, like- right. Well, and that personal thing I think is really important, right? It's something I didn't do in my last shoot is, you know, I'm a Star Wars geek and all sorts of yeah. other things like that is I should have taken some with that because it's actually sharing more of yourself, which is, is the point yes. of some of this, is them getting to know you. Yeah, um, and so- I think – Maybe just keep an eye on what you like. Like if you're on LinkedIn and you see people posting some photos, you think, oh, that's really good. Like maybe reach out to them and ask them who their photographer is if they're local. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like I think I think if you're going to do a shoot and I'm doing it in that position now, just start watching for who you – the styles that you like and, yeah, talk to a couple of them. It's a great suggestion. And the other thing you suggestion. want to get access to is – I know we've gone off track here, but it's still Not kind of visual. Um, yeah, is make sure you get access to all the photos. There's nothing worse than being shown 100 photos and you can only choose 10. It's just yeah. traumatic. <laughs> well, and also in this day and age, we need the 100, to be yeah, quite honest. Do. You need yeah. variety because yeah. you're putting I, the same I one just, over all the time I'm is not, not going to do I'm not a fan of photographers that want to, you know, charge per how many you get. Like you just give them yeah. all to me. But yeah. even if they can just edit the ones out that are terrible first and then, yeah. Yeah. So, And interestingly, I've noticed actually, and it's only a few people doing it, but it's really effective is they're doing some with like unpleasant looks on their faces, whether it's stern yeah. or upset. Shock, or um, surprise. Right? And, yeah. and you don't 
think anything of the time, but actually when you're, depends whether you're, what you're marketing or the story you're telling, it's perfect. Like it really yeah. gets your attention because that person's really cheery. Why are they looking so horrified? Like it's, yeah. it's, you know, we just don't think that way when we get some shots done. Um, That's true. Like I saw, I think I went on a, down a rabbit hole and looked up James's TikTok and he'd done a, um, a, a video about people being surprised when they had to pay tax because they'd had, um, uh, you know, they'd lost, they couldn't work and they had the income protection insurance was being paid out and they needed to pay tax <laughs> yes. on it and they didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, you could do a shock surprise or a worried surprise face on that. Exactly. So I think, exactly. I think visually too, like once you get those photos, you can, if you've got a brand in, in your brand area, if you've got a paid, a pro account with Canva, you can upload them all into your photo area or into a folder and have them all ready to go. And then you can sit there and remove backgrounds on all of them. So you've got a version with the background on it and without the background. Nice. So, and um, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, you've got curlier hair than me, but the cool <laughs> thing about Canva's um, background remover is that it, it removes background even from people that have really curly hair <laughs> without yeah, all the. It's good. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. That it is. It's better because I've had it, I've used other tools and it doesn't work for, yeah. for hair like mine, but it does. It does a really good job. Yeah, really um, tight and you can curls. Fix it, works it a little well too. A little too That's if a, you need to. I think I showed that at. Um, probably the conference you were at, like just the background remover works for curly hair. It's just everyone's like, whoa. Um, so, yeah, I think that just having those photos accessible and easy to use and then you can create something and just put the photo over the top. Um, yeah. And, yeah. you know, some of those design skills can come quite easily to you when you've got the assets set up properly. And and it's the the doing that to the assets every time you're trying to do something new is the delay. Whereas yes. if you do it once, like yep. you say, and I just wrote down actually, listener, um, as Donna was talking, that I'll get my VA to do that with a whole lot of photos I've got, whereas I manually do it each time. Whereas to yeah. give them a task, load these up, please, and then do this to them, and then we're going to save them here so that then I don't yeah. ever have to and do I'm, that again. I mean, I'm Why guilty not? of it too. Like the other day I couldn't find I, I knew I had one with the background removed with a yellow background because it's quite bright and it's good to yeah. put into like a – any sort of profile image because it pops. I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh, obviously I didn't save it in Canva. But, um, yeah, having for that sure. organised. Or if you've got a now, team of people and you need to do something for your business, you, you want to be able to access everyone's headshots. So definitely. having them in there as well is good. Definitely. Um, now, integration. So one of the things that um, – and I actually haven't used this, but I noticed it the other day is you can link your social media accounts into Canva so that then yes. you can, you know, post directly or, or, or even schedule. Is that right? You can actually yes. schedule. So posts? I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, uh, there's a lot of features and I sometimes have to check which, yes. So it's on the pro account. Um, yep. You can schedule or schedule depending on which country. Yeah, you're in, I, don't, I never know which eight way to... platforms. Okay. Uh, wow. It's, like I'm across a few social media management tools, and I I can't I'm not sure of the actual specifics with things like Reels, etc. Sorry, I've lost yep. my mic. Um, my headphones. Sorry, uh, <laughs> but it is uh, it's pretty good. So you can and and the other cool thing that they have in place is that when you go into the calendar, it will show you um, some of the days of celebration. And I know we don't want to post about that all the time, but it could be, you know, it could be a change your password day and you're like, oh, excellent. I needed something to think about to post that day. Right. Um, so they have that in the calendar and then you can click and get templates for those topics. So it, it's, again, Canva bringing everything together, together to make it easier. And I've spent many years having to create stuff in Canva, download it, and then schedule it in another tool. So yeah. it is good that you can now schedule directly from Canva. And for those of you who are sort of wondering where we're going there with the dates, um, I'd encourage you to check out Donna's blog, sociallysorted.com.au, because she each month will come out with, hey, did you know these these are the days? Like like we're talking like St. That's Patrick's funny, Day. I didn't even but, think about that. Yeah. Right. But yeah. all sorts of other um, weird and wonderful, you know, World Penguin Day yeah. or whatever the thing is um, yeah. that can just be another way to bring either some humour or even just be a link, a pivot to a story you need to tell and it's just a perfect pivot. Um, yeah, and I think that's the days. key. Like mm. people don't – you don't want to be just posting, you know, it's Apple Day, Wine Day every single yeah. day. Okay. <laughs> but you can you can bring that into your own personality and your own brand. So it might be yeah. Wine Day, but, you you know, you've had a really big week working on a project. So you might say, hey, like we're getting to Friday. It's Shiraz Day today, which is a good thing because we've just finished XYZ project and I think I need a glass of Barossa, you know, right. Shiraz. Exactly. So you've just pivoted – to talk about your project yeah. versus just talking about wine day. Um, yeah. 
and and even the templates in Canva, like most of my templates are, are photo based mm-hmm. um, or element based, so you can change out the photos and change out the content, and it will be a completely different topic. Yeah. So yeah, those those days are quite helpful for just getting the ideas flowing, or if you're really stuck for something, but you can always pivot it to be about about you or your audience more so, like making it about your customers, who who they are or what they might be doing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yep. Um, in terms of then sort of any other secretly little things, I guess uh, we talked about the sort of AI and the digital first documents and videos. Yes. I think I did want to touch on presentations. I feel like it's, well, in yeah. my or in our world, it's the one I think most people have no earthly clue that, that Canva has. It has what I would call VC level pitch quality documents yes. that are like presentations designed ready for you to tailor to your brand and your topic. Definitely. Like the, and thousands of them (laughs) yeah and I think the thing is with presentations um well a I used to always use PowerPoint so I was always downloading everything into (laughs) this whole photos into PowerPoint so now you can do them completely in Canva you can present from within Canva when you're if you have to do something over Zoom which is really cool um and I have not used PowerPoint for three years because of Canva um so that's there's just no cool. reason to, and no, and and, and, and I th- I think it, it does force is- you to because I like very few. Okay, so when I started doing um, public speaking on a more sort of structured way and out into the into the public forum rather than just in the industry, I actually yeah. paid a designer to sort of design some template look and feel that was my brand and that sort of thing. So, that, yeah. but that's unusual, right? That's not where most people go. But what we don't do is recognize that you've got these slides up there. It's a visual story. And then we use the most bland, dull looking <laughs> image or, or yeah. look, you know, bullet points on a white screen. Like it's, we are so far beyond that. Um, and these templates in Canva mean you can really lift your game here. Um, yes. And I yeah. think um, the cool thing is too, like as a template designer for Canva, like we're always adding keywords in the background. So if you can go and find templates you like, you can click on that template, you can go down to the bottom and you can see a bunch of keywords and then you can actually click and find and there will be other um, presentations suggested for you as well. Yep. So you can find more like that. You can also um, find more by the same designer too if you want similar style. Um, You can actually follow us. I'll give you the link for my Canva profile, but you can follow creators in Canva like me so that if you like someone's style, you can find more of their content. And if it's someone that does a lot of presentations, um, you know, you can check those out. But the cool thing is too that um, I think I mentioned before the Docs um, document is a bit like like Google Docs, but it's – it doesn't really have line breaks. It's just one long document uh, in sections. Sort of like a landing page kind almost, of more, like, like a scroll through. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the most common questions, like how do I print it? Well, you can print it as a PDF, but it won't line break exactly where you want to. So right. that's – but but then Canva will say, well, this is visual first. It's uh, digital first. Yep. Not meant to be design- pr- printed. It may be at some stage they'll do that. So the idea is you can collaborate with your team, you can comment and you can also tag people with the with when you're commenting and send a share by email. There's lots of different ways you can share things. Yep. Um, but if you're working in a document like that and you've sort of got a bit of an outline, you can then um, – do what's called docs to decks. There'll be a bot- button at the top where it'll say, do you want to convert this to a presentation? And you just click the button. It will give you some style formats and off you go. You click the button. It will take all the information from that document and turn it into the base of a presentation. And wow. Geez, sometimes Canva really nails it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes you're like, oh, well, I need to change what? that. But like uh, I, it's the artificial intelligence is pretty amazing. So there's Well, that. and just that step. I mean, that's a yeah. good hour. That's at least a good hour you've oh, saved Oh, gosh, there. yeah. At like least. where do you start? I mean, yeah. I can spend an hour choosing a template and I Me create too. templates. <laughs> so that's pretty sad. Yeah. Um, so I think that powerful – and once you get a design you like, you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. Just use that template. And I would recommend using templates that are, you know, really um, easy to switch out the images or the – you can also do um, – like pie charts and tables and things like that in Canva now, yes. like they have that all integrated as well. Um, yes. Even animated kind of flow charts and things. They've got software in there that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, find a template that's got some of those 
pie charts or or just is interesting, an interesting way to share. I don't want to tell everyone to use pie charts. That's a bit boring, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes they're necessary. But just find one that's an interesting, engaging presentation. And there's some pretty cool ones in there. Um, yeah. Uh, my and- advice I, I don't know, this is a bit of a segue, but if you're doing a, if you've got a template and you want to make it a little bit on brand, I have a few tips for that. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, they all start with S, but uh, I think <laughs> it's the five S rules of non design. So, if you're a non designer <laughs> or a, a, and you want to use a template and not sort of have to design from scratch, I always suggest that you stick to the design or the main design elements. So, don't move the borders around, don't move where the photo sits, don't move where the elements are, keep the text in the same place. Like, because the designer's already done that for you. Yeah. Okay. So, when we create a template, we do that with that in mind. But you can switch some of the things. So you can change the font to another similar font. If it's a big, bold font and you want to change it to a brand font, like use a similar sort of brand, bold font. Yeah. Um, and then you can also do things in Canva like there'll be a button pop up, say switch all, you know, all of these fonts to this new font and you can click that and it will do it right throughout the document. Yeah. Um, it's always hard explaining these things when you're just audio, but hopefully yeah. <laughs> you'll see that pop up when you do it. The other thing you can do is I just suggest switching one or two things. So don't go in and change the fonts and the colors and the photos and the elements and the, you know, try and just start with one or two things. Change the fonts to your, your fonts and the photos. See how that looks. If you want to then change the colors to be a more brand, you can, but just do one or two things at a time and just make sure it, it sort of looks visually appealing. Yeah. Um, and then same for same. If you've got like, if there's an icon of a, like a target and you want to change it to a house, if you're doing financial advice for real estate or something, yeah. then choose a similar style of icon or design, like a little um, illustration. Yeah. Don't use like a painted one. You use a like a block yeah. uh, icon. Yeah. Um, if it's a photo that's um, of people, then maybe change it to a similar kind of photo. Or if it's a really busy photo, change it to a busy photo if there's lots of space in it choose something similar um, but don't move them around too much so that's same for same yep um, and size matters so if there's a line of text that's you know like five or six words don't go putting a paragraph in that space because <laughs> automatically you're going to ruin the design of the yep. template yep. so white space matters um, and size matters as well so they're just a few tips as a non-designer you can use so you don't sort of come in and just sort of break the template and make it look like it wasn't designed by a designer. And I've, I, like, I 100% support those because I've done all of that breaking and Frankensteining oh, yeah. on Canva Designs. And I have too over right? the years, you know, like I, I, being a template designer for Canva, we uh, basically go to design school. Uh, you know, I had some skills, but I've learned a lot since then. And, um, yeah, eight years ago I did exactly all the things I said not to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's pretty – and so, you know, it's – and it's also more efficient for you if you can learn some of these skills and not have to try and design from scratch. You know, you can get on with the work you need to do. And I think, you know, the other thing is, I mean, there'll be members of, of our teams who who love playing with these things. So if you said, look, I, I only want you to allocate half an hour, but I want you to dive in. We're going to use it. You know, we need a Instagram tile. We're going to use it for this. It, this, You know, these are the words. Find something similar that you've – like a selection of similar ones for me to pick from. Like you can yes. you can have where it narrows it down for you so you're not doing that because the, one of the mistakes I've made is picked a template that might have two or three words but I need to put a sentence. Yeah. You know, and it and it's clearly tricky. messes yeah. it up. Yeah. So And I think too like – Canva's getting better. This is all the artificial intelligence built in in the background. Like when you open one of my templates um, just to look at the preview, it will show more of them below. So sometimes you can see other designs by that designer. There's lots of ways that the information's coming through. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it can be hard when you want to put a certain amount of information in. Like there's always going to be times when you sort of break the rules a little bit. But I think the more you can be aware of white space and not, crushing everything up against other <laughs> other things. Just um, going to jam it all in. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, you know, and most of us understand that presentations should always be less word heavy if we can manage it. You know, like I love yeah. doing ones with big photos in the background and let yeah. people distract by looking at the image versus looking at me. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, and I think the thing I've realised, I've do- so when you're in Canva, listeners, then there's an opportunity, there's a little thing. I think it's the bottom right where you can change the size in terms of what you're seeing. So you can see it yeah. at, you know, 10% oh, yeah, or 100%. Or yes. two, right. I always, once I'm done, I all, particularly if it's a social media 
you know, image, I always zoom it to make it quite small like it was on a phone because yes, something that looks fabulous the size that's, of your Mac yeah. <laughs> does not necessarily look fabulous once it's yeah, on. Yeah, that's really know, clever. Um, and also just, you know, whether you want the word or the image to pop out. And, correct. Um, yeah, that's, that's correct. really clever. Correct, because I've made – I've yeah. spent a lot of time doing something and then when I did that I went, oh, no, yes. you can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky yeah. mistake. Learn from me, listeners. Don't make those <laughs> mistakes. So in terms of what's coming up, I know uh, you mentioned to me actually um, before we were recording that, that you guys are sort of, you know, f- pain of death of sharing too much of what's coming up in Canvas. So I don't want to get any secrets from you, but what are the themes of where it's going in the future? What are they focusing on in terms yeah, of um, look, you know, I, development? I'm one of a, a, a couple, a few dozen, I think there's about 40 of us Canva verified experts around the world. And uh, so we uh, get insight into some of the, the features coming up before they're released. So we're under NDA some, with some of that because, you know, yeah. they're still developing it. And But sometimes, um, you know, things are being rolled out and we can talk about it. At the moment, it's funny, I think I just had a look at what's under development that I'm aware of and I think they're in kind of, you know, busy bee mode working on a lot of things in the background. Mm. Um, sometimes we can see a lot of stuff coming up. It's probably more, you know, updates and improvements Um, but I will say that they are constantly at the moment um, you know working on improving what's already in there like the visual suite is well established and I think things like video we're seeing new things pop up all the time where you know the team's been working on stuff like the other day I said that those animations came up and then you know and then then we can add slow motion on our video with tools and um, there's different things being added all the time new integrations with um they announced a, an integration with an, a big audio library recently. All those things are constantly being rolled out. Yeah, um, so yeah. I think, you know, what you'll see with Canva is just more and more improvement of what they've already got in place at the moment and and I'm sure they're working on some cool things in the background, especially yeah. in terms of video, in terms of AI, um, in terms of teams and collaboration. Yeah. I think there's always new things being um, improved upon but added in and for the most part it's it's integrated quite well. I will recommend there's a, um, they've had two events now called Canva Create and I've mm-hmm. been fortunate to be invited down to both in Sydney. Um, I don't know if you've ever, you remember the old Apple launches? Well, they still yes. have them. Yes. I, you know, I love them. They're pr- very cool. But this is like if an Apple launch was done at Disneyland. I don't know. It's just <laughs> the coolest day. We're in a room with like 3,000 Canva employees. There's more around the world. but And it's just such a cool event it's so well produced um and they release or they they uh preview or show a lot of the things that they've been working on and they launch them Uh, and so i'll give you the link to put in the show notes but it's called canva create you can go and watch the last one and it's highly recommend watching it purely also because canva talks about some of their mission when they started they wanted to democratize design but that changed um well i think mel melanie already Melanie and Cliff and Cameron, the three co-founders, always had the, this grand plan. But I remember having coffee with her years ago. She said they're only 2% of the way there. Now they say they're 1% of the way there. But their goal is to become one of the most valuable companies in the world, which, as I said, they've done. But then step two is to do the most good they can do. And mm. um, the charity side of things is amazing. Um, that Step one fuels step two. They have a goal currently to eradicate um, extreme poverty in the world um, through their charity and and Melanie and Cliff have donated 30% of their share in Canva to that, which is billions. Um, So, you know, they... And so interesting, you know, from a... Because we all focus on people, you know, Microsoft and all these these guys, these... um, these, Older white Big gentlemen, um, <laughs> sorry, they have all this money, um, and you know, oh, and they're giving their money away. But generally, when you hear about it, it's it's way down the path. Like it's yes. it's decades down the path. Yeah, and they've, they've done clearly this very early, right? And it's part. Yeah. It's sort of it's part of who they are and what they want to do from day one. And I love yeah. that because oh, look, the way they're yeah. going to make decisions is going to sort of fuel that. And look, um, I could talk about Canva all day, but I really passionately love talking about this side because it just impresses me so much. Like they've yeah. given Canva free to, I don't know, 350,000, just looking at the stats here, non-for-pro- not-for-profits around the world. Yeah. Um, education, it's free in high schools and now they've got a new product. They're trying to get it into universities. Like schools can use it for free um, as districts. They um, have also just 
I mean, there was something they said at the last Canva Create that everyone is part of this. And I think that there's such a good community vibe with what they're saying is that it's not just Canva's team that's contributing to this, uh, making a difference. It's, um, it's the users, it's the, the people producing apps that integrate with Canva. It's the community, it's the creators, it's the, the, you know, it's everybody. If you're a user of Canva, then you're essentially contributing to this because when you're paying for your software, it's going to these amazing courses, causes. Um, so yeah, I just think it's really empowering that they're, really focusing on quality education for kids, not for profits to do their best work and um, trying to end extreme poverty. So uh, you think you're coming into a graphic design tool and, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, and <laughs> that's the I real. I don't know. I think we'd all agree that. Behind that the poss- scenes. Right. I think we'd all agree, though, you know, if somebody can be su- successful at what Mel and crew have done, then maybe yeah. they're better, as, like maybe they're the better people to hit some of these big things than the politicians are. Like yeah, maybe look, honestly, because they clearly think, got drive and they listen to their consumer and they like they've they've ticked all the boxes. So maybe they're better off. For, like maybe yeah. they're the right ones to have these harder things to get done. And maybe they'll yeah, succeed. Well, they're definitely uh, they're definitely getting stuff done. And and also it's not just throwing money at at problems. They're researching. You know, like I think that right. recently, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. They came back and said, you know, like we've researched what, how we can actually help at a grassroots level with poverty and it is actually giving money to these people to use in the ways that they need to use it versus, you know, you know, there's always the argument, do you give money, do you give resources give, right, and right. they go in and research. Um, but, yeah, and the best thing is that it's an Aussie company. It's super, yes. it's super cool. Don't you love so, that? I, yeah, we all love it. Well, you know, yeah. we've just all watched the Matildas go nuts, so I think we're all very oh, excited gosh. about all things oh. underdog Aussie. Not that you could call Canva an underdog anymore, although it still has that vibe, can I say? Yeah. It still feels – feels startup kind of it vibe. It does, like and, and sort of understated. There's an understated yeah. tone. I can't quite describe what I mean there, but it doesn't It doesn't feel like Salesforce. Oh, look, I, I mean, I know – um, and I have met the founders and, you know, met them early on and they're just, they're, they are genuinely down to earth people, lovely. Mm. You know, they'll come and say hi. They're not, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty special. But I yeah. think, um, yeah, I think uh, it's been a big week. Yeah. and I'm still recovering. I know. I'm, I'm feeling just, emotional I mean, now talking about all this. I know. Well, and look, the you know the listener, this will be coming to you a, a few weeks after um, the Matildas yes. got knocked out, and um, but but I think it's an interesting example again of of um, yeah Change the way makers. we can bring yeah absolutely and and you know having just different people doing different things, diversity, inclusion, all those things are all yeah. the things that Canva does particularly well oh, as, as well. Is yep. there anything we've missed? Any features? Gosh. Or we've covered um, a fair bit. Let me think. I think we've talked about a lot of the features. I mean, I, I think my my recommendation is to go set up a free account, like, you know, get a pro account if you can, just start off well. Um, and just go in. There's a. I think I did neglect to mention Canva has what's called Design School, um, right. and you can find it in the um, toolbar up the top. Uh, there's a few menus of places you can go to find extra help, but they have a lot of really great videos on how to use Canva, and some of them are very interactive. Uh, interactive activities you can just open it up and start clicking and moving things around. That's always been their mo to like be able to go in and hands on do the training right. in Canva, like you know awesome. move this photo, drag it in, and um, put a hat on the monkey. That was the early yeah. version. Um, they've still <laughs> got those, but also really short little 101 videos. So if you go into Canva you know that it's easy to find their tutorials it's called design yeah. school um so i would recommend you do that and uh you know start checking out the templates check out uh, maybe go to, and watch the canva create video yes. of their last one and just see the sorts of things that you can do in canva because it's kind of just a fun overview of what is coming into canva but um i think it will just give you an idea of what's possible um and then, yeah, I mean, I didn't even touch on some of the things like magic design, which is where you can drag some photos into Canva and then it will give you, <laughs> and you can just say what you want to design and it will just design things for you. Um, it pulls in templates that we've, you know, that, that Canva and, and the creators have all designed and pulls in elements of those templates to produce something for you um, wow. based on what you import. So that's uh, the artificial intelligence for some of that stuff is is pretty cool. So yeah, I think I think the best thing with Canva is to just dive in and have a play. Like pick one yeah. thing, start to 
have a play around and and just click and <laughs> see what you can create. You can't really make mistakes. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Um, all right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Canva, then the website link is in the episode show notes, along with Donna's LinkedIn uh, details. So feel free to nudge her if you'd like to find out more about how she can assist. And I'd really encourage you to check out her blog, sociallysorted.com.au. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Donna, sharing how Canva can help out the artistically challenged amongst us. <laughs> You're very and welcome. Hoping- and yeah. Uh, well, let's call them artistically empowered now. Because they've, exactly. They've exactly. got the toolkit. We, so, no yeah, longer no, it's defensive. Been a pleasure. We're all excited. Thank yes. you so much for your time. No worries. I'll look forward to seeing what they all create. So, we covered an awful lot there, folks. I hope it didn't blow your little minds there, with, if, particularly if you've never used Canva. However, I'd love to know, have you used Canva before or maybe only used it a bit and didn't really think it had much value? You know, do you agree or disagree um, with the discussion on, you know, on Canva? Because I'd love you to share your insights on the Ensemble community platform. And specifically for this, if there's something great that you've created with Canva that you just couldn't believe you could pull off and think it's wonderful wonderful historically, go in and share with the community because I think people, you know, as a community advisors, we need to see what's possible, right, for our industry. So if you've done something really cool, please share because there is just so many applications for this tool. It will be the, aside from free tools, it will be the least expensive business tool you pay for. And it will have an impact right across the business. I can absolutely guarantee you that. Um, I now see Canva as a core part of what I do. Um, and what I just realized in my conversation with Donna is that I'm not then giving my team access to that, which is crazy. So let's dive into sort of my general thoughts. Like I said uh, in the chat with Donna, I've been a user for like eight years, you know, and what stands out to me is you know, these guys are the unicorn of unicorns in terms of tech and, you know, Silicon Valley and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, everywhere else we're hearing about these major groups, Google, all these people having to sack hundreds and thousands of people, you know, and they're all contracting, look at the economy, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Canva is still quietly hiring, right? This is a business that is not just providing a solution that's resonated across the world. They're also doing it in a really responsible way. They take their role as founders and, you know, holding people's well-being in their hands re- as their employees really seriously. And so I think, you know, understanding that can give you an insight into why this tool has taken off because they put the same thoughtfulness into the tool itself. Um, And, you know, the rate at which they're now releasing high quality add-ons is incredible. Donna and I were just chatting as after we press stop, um, there's a number of things we didn't even cover uh, that they've just started adding in. And I'll mention one of them later, but, but there's just constant value. I would have been this excited about Canva even well before all of that, because I just think it can do some basic designy stuff for us really easily but um, it's also taking it to the nth level. And so, you know, if you've got kids, they could be using it for assignments or for their invitations for their parties. Or, you know, I just I just had a joint 100th birthday party uh, with my husband. We both turned 50 this year. So we had a big soiree for a whole weekend. And I did a whole, you know, I did invitations and the Facebook event header and, and you know, the wrap for the um design chocolate sort of things that we did. I know it sounds ridiculous, but all of that I did in Canva and did it in a matter of seconds. We even had lanyards that were like a VIP lanyard for going behind in a rock concert. All of those were done in Canva, right? So it's super easy to use and I am the least design skilled person on the planet. And if I can do it, you can too. The other thing I'd say is, you know, I'd really call out to anybody that isn't a business owner or a practice manager or, you know, the, the senior advisor or anything like that. So anybody in the other, the other roles in the business, and you might even be in your professional year, you might be really new to the industry. And I'd encourage you to get one of the free Canva accounts. If your business doesn't have an account and feel free to ask them uh, if you could become part of the team based account. But if not, then get your own free account because you can even start you know, getting some uh, icons to use in the advice doc that sort of are those anchoring, you know, topic icons um, that you can do for the executive summary. You could come up with, 
a summary of the um, of the SOA that's almost like an executive summary, but it's the infographic of that. You could start like you could start playing with this just for your own benefit, and you could really add value to the business you're in by helping them see the different ways they can communicate these concepts. Let alone. Um, playing with the social media aspect and video. You could even do videos explaining um, concepts internally, just practice for internally for people um, and then show them what they could be doing otherwise. Um, I think, you know, uh, younger members of our industry can really contribute to this because you have far less fear about video, audio, social, all that sort of thing. And so if you can show us how easy these tools are to use, then I think more more people in the industry will start using them. One of my, I've got a couple of Ninja tips for you, but one of my Ninja tips is you may have previously got something designed, put together by a designer. Um, one of mine was a uh speaker kit. So this is sort of a PDF that a speaker might send to somebody. It gives them a sample of their style, the topics they cover, has some testimonials. Like It's like a, a brochure about me as a speaker. Um, and I got it designed by a wonderful designer who I love dearly, uh, but it's out of date, right? It's a couple of years old. And it just needed tweaking. It didn't need completely redesigning. And so you can upload a PDF into Canva and it will break down the design elements so you can tweak things and update them. So if if you need to change a sentence or there's a link that needs to be changed or a person's name, you need to take a team member out and add a different one in, like any of that stuff where otherwise it'd be going all the way back to the designer and it was a palaver and all sorts of things, you could just upload that PDF in and Canva will break it down for you so you can tweak some of those elements. So that's why one ninja tip that's actually um, saved us a bit of time and energy. Another one is... There are so there's designers like Donna who who come up with designs you can use in Canva that are free once you're once you're a member or once you're a user of Canva. But there's also and there's loads, honestly, there are loads, loads of templates, right? So like like Donna said, like it is a bit of a black hole. Once you start looking, it'll, you know, you'll dive into a down into the uh, black hole of, of design templates. So you sort of need to allocate, allocate time when you're looking. That's one way to do it. The other though is if you're embarking on uh, talking about a particular thing or you want to collate a whole lot of um, maybe it's uh, you know social media tiles and you want to get a whole lot of templates pulled together that have sort of got a similar feel um, and that then you could just update for your brand. Then there are people online who sell uh, Canva template packs. They've got them for healthcare, you know, health and well-being. They've got them for like all sorts of things. If you Googled Canva Instagram templates for financial advisors, then it will come up with people on Etsy and other places that will for not much money sell you these packs. Now, the reason that can be cool is it'll be a big long list. We're talking like three or 400 that are all, they've designed specifically to work well together and so then you just tailor, you know, change it for the colors and maybe the words you'd use. And then you've got a whole lot backlog ready to go. So that's just another alternative I just flagged with you. There's also the other one I've used is um, there are designers that pull together Canva templates for ebooks and course documentation. So if you're doing your own online course or something like that for your clients, uh, one to many program, then there's people that have packaged together those templates. And so they've laid out all the possible designs you might have, or when I mean design, I mean like a chart or a graph for it, and then you can just tailor it. So um, it can save you an enormous amount of time. And these these templates are not expensive, folks. So um, if you can't quite find what you're looking for, then head off into Google Landia and uh, see what you can find if you willing to pay just a little bit um, and you may find exactly the template you need and be able to knock up something really, really quickly that's really high quality. Now, the other thing I'd say is uh, the way that I engage with graphic designers now has changed now that we use Canva. And that is that when I get them to design something, it could be because you know, I'm doing a new podcast or something that needs a whole lot of design or a new um, presentation topic and I'm going to really get into it and do a whole lot of elements of design, then what I now do with designers is that, yes, they they come up, you know, what's the what's the 
the font and the coloring and you know, all the styles of photos, all sorts of things. Um, but I also get them to provide that to me with a whole lot of Canva templates already set up that I can then tweak. So sort of asking your designer to work within Canva with you will mean that you're better able to use the tools and that they'll actually design that with that in mind. Um, and so, you know, they don't want to be Oh, we want that one to be upside down this time. Can you, your designer doesn't want to be doing that work, to be honest. It's it's a waste of their time. So they will love the fact that, that you're ready to then have it sitting in Canva and ready to go. So I'd encourage you to uh, do that as well. As you know, if you have listened to the podcast before, there's only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and that is avid curiosity. So to help you build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner tool that I want you to take a look at is called Dynamic QR Codes. Now, this lives within Canva. They've actually, this is a business that's sort of partnered with or integrated with Canva. Um, the business is, hold on, I'll actually give you the name. Hovercode is the actual business, but it's an app that sits within Canva. So it's an add-on and basically it creates customizable dynamic QR codes for your brand. So let's imagine that you've got a brochure or an FDS or a, maybe it's your investment philosophy document, whatever it is, and you want to take the client or the, the prospect, um, they want to be able to go like a video. Maybe there's a, t- a talking video that you've got that is through to YouTube, right? But this is a document you're sending them. And so you could have a link, but you could have a QR card that they could just open it on their phone, right? Um, And then scan it and then, yay, okay, we're looking at the video. Well, you can have that in your color with your little logo inside it. Like your QR code can be something that goes beautifully with the rest of what you've designed for that document. Um, So that is something that's well worth checking out in Canva, but you could also check out hovercode.com as well. Um, They have circle QR codes instead of the squares. If the squares offend you, then feel free. You can have a circle QR code. Um, And then you can also, in fact, with their service, you can track how often that QR code's used and and when the spikes are. So um, it's just, I just think about when QR codes might be usable now. We've all become so used to them due to the, you know, during the pandemic, they're getting used more and more again. Um, and so just think about if there's ways that that could be helpful. Maybe if you do any virtual sessions um, that you prefer prospecting or even for clients and you, you want to provide them with resources, then you could use that a QR code as the way they can get to the resource quickly while you're they're watching you. Fantastic. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event or maybe for a virtual webinar for your group, then I have a a keynote on Tech Overload to Tech Delight. And this is all about helping financial advisors navigate the digital maze, not overdoing it, making sure they've got rigorous processes and structures in place so that they don't just end up chasing after every next tech advance. Um, Then, you know, and I've also got workshops that can dive into that with some practical techniques as well. So if that piques your interest, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.